Well, everybody said yes. And we're sitting, it, it, there was an amphitheater there. <laughs> Doesn't everybody have an amphitheater? And a dance floor and then a stage. And I had hired Jack Sheldon's band, the, the uh, band that used to be on the Merv Griffin show. And um, Merv was there and a lot of my friends were there. And um, George Slaughter, who produced Laugh-In, said to me, you know, Suzanne, you've got some of the greatest singers in the world sitting around this table. Why don't you get them up there to sing? And I said, oh, I don't want to like ask my friends to work on their off days. He said, well, I will. Well, all of a sudden I looked up Merv Griffin's The Master of Ceremonies. The first singer is Keely Smith. Remember with Keely Smith and Louis Cremont, she sang The Old Black Magic. And then um, uh, Susan Anton got up and, you know, she's a highly underrated performer. She just kills it when she gets up there. And then Michael Feinstein did a set. And then Robert Goulet got up and sang Man from La Mancha, a cappella, Banging Against the Rocks. And I got up and sang, and I know there, oh, Jack Jones, and there were some others. And then the closer was Barry Manilow got up and sang Weekend in New England, Mandy, and then he ended with Copacabana. And my son is photographing this whole thing. He said, you could, you could have bought this party, Mom. I said, I know. It was everyone was so anxious to free themselves of 9-11. That's why they all came. That's why they all wanted to perform. I, I had many evenings like that in that house. But um, Alan's wanted to sell it for about 13 years and I was the problem. And I would say when the realtors would come over, well, you know, it's an old house and things go wrong. And Alan would look at me like, it's crazy. But then um, last year, this old guy, I had shown it to Josh Flagg, you know, Million Dollar Listing, but he didn't sell it. Independent of him, this old guy comes on the property. And I mean, oh, 90 years old, 90 years old. It's hundreds of stairs and, and um, it's a mountain. And he looks at two rooms and he said, this is where I want to spend the rest of my life. And I thought, okay, what's left of it? And he bought it. He said, what do you want? He bought it cash. And we had to be out in a month. You have no idea what it's like to move out of a house you've lived in for 45 years, especially when you didn't ever really think you were gonna leave. I, I thought I'd never leave, but I, I'm not in my own house right now. I'm in a rental because I have a new one we're building that will be finished in August, but I don't. A couple of years I lived there. And, um, and also I fell on those hundreds of stairs I fell uh, waiting for Alan at the top of our bedroom stairs and there are 50 stairs from the bedroom to the kitchen. And I was standing there waiting for him. He came, he grabbed my hand and he uncharacteristically slipped on a boulder, pulled me down on top of him. He didn't get hurt, but I broke my neck, my spine, my hip and cracked my teeth. So it's been a long year um, recovering from all that. It was time, you know, we lived, we, we did it. We did it right. It was time to leave there. Do you miss it at all? I mean, you know, like more than you thought or less? You would think I would and I don't. Uh, I think I grew weary of how much care that house took. I do miss, we had a herd of bighorn sheep that would come to our bedroom window in the morning and look in. And uh, the day that we moved out for good, I went out the back door of our bedroom and the sheep were out there and they came over to us and they stared at us. And we stared at them and they stared at us. And I realized they know we're leaving and they came to say goodbye. It was very sad. And we're, when I think of them, I get very emotional. But where, we, where we're moving to, well, we have big horn sheep, so they'll come back. In fact, the house that we're moving to, the previous owner had left a sculpture at the end of a promontory point of a shepherd and a donkey made of cement and they were you know, uh, cemented into the ground. Well, a big horned sheep came down the hill and saw the donkey. Uh, the workmen who were there videoed this and went, oh, hello. <laughs> and the big horned sheep tried to have his way with her, but being made of cement, she wasn't too receptive. <laughs> and he ended up knocking her over and killing her. <laughs> oh my God. See, like, at least you're going to have the sheep though again in like your new house. Yeah, yeah. And I love them. 
and I, they're 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 interesting. You know, whenever I uh, encounter an animal, I always lower my head so they know I'm not a predator and that I'm not a threat. And I always did that with the sheep. When I come out the back, on, you know, on a regular basis, I'd see them and I'd lower my head. They kind of look up like, oh, okay, all right. And um, we became friends. So yeah, I miss them, but I don't miss the house. Listen, at least you missed the sheep. But I yeah. saw, speaking of houses, I saw, I mean, you had another viral moment a few weeks ago, you and Courtney Cox playing a little Three's Company music, <laughs> using the thigh master, of course, Suzanne, because we have good product placement, like cooking the turkey burgers. Yeah. Tell, tell me about that, because that was just so wonderful. Even though it was like a small little video, I'm like, this is all we need. This is so iconic. It was Courtney's idea. I go to her house on weekends often. I really, really like her. She's a great girl and she has interesting friends. And uh, she said, come on for dinner Friday night. I like to cook dinner for my friends. So we went over there and um, she said, bring a thigh master. So I brought my thigh master. And she said, I have one too. And that's, and then this was all her idea and it took a minute and it was fun. And we were laughing and I was drinking tequila and woohoo. And so it went viral. <laughs> What's the best thing about being friends with Courtney Cox? She looks like she would be fun to be friends with. She's uncomplicated. You know what I mean? There's no ego with her. Uh, you, when you walk in her house, uh, which I think she has the nicest house in Malibu, um, there's no sense of, you know, she thinks she's special. She's just normal and she cooks and sometimes she forgets to come out and say hello when you arrive because she's always got so many people there. She hangs out with Jason Bateman and uh, Jennifer Aniston and uh, Lisa Kudrow and um, uh, uh, Jennifer Aniston's assistant is Amanda Anka and Amanda Anka is Paul Anka's daughter and Paul Anka and I are real good friends. We worked together a lot in the 80s and so it was all it's all kind of a Weird family thing. Who's a better cook, Courtney Cox or Jennifer Aniston? Well, I've never eaten Jennifer's food, but um, Courtney's real good. Nobody's as good as me. <laughs> I was at one point in my life going to be a chef. And so I just really understand food. And um, uh, so I haven't, yeah, I have cooked for Courtney, come to think of it. Anyway, Jennifer's great. They're all great. I love it. It's like a really fun. Uh, it's mainly Sunday. She has Sunday lunches it's that spread into dinner and uh, the food flows and the booze flows and it's just real nice. And the ocean is there. It sounds like fun. Well, the yeah. last time you were here, you also mentioned that you just sent a 